Happy New Year to you all, kicking off 2021 with a brand new Adobe Illustrator tutorial I'll be showing you how to create your very own Tetris inspired text effect. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Illustrator and get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a new document which is at least 1920 by 1080 pixels. This should give us enough space to work with. And then set up the following colour swatches so they're accessible within the colour swatches panel as we'll be using these colours throughout the tutorial. In the top left hand corner I've also set up some reference Tetris shapes to help us out when creating our letters. Each shape has also been given a colour which I've selected from our colour swatch group. So the first thing we need to do is select the rectangular grid tool. This can be found within the submenu of the line segment tool. And then you just want to click anywhere within the artboard. The size that we want to choose is 1000 pixels for the width, 1000 pixels for the height, and then we want 100 horizontal dividers and 100 vertical dividers. Everything else you can leave as default and then just press OK. While the grid's selected, just horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard and then select a black one pixel or one point stroke just so we can see where each square within our grid sits. Next, make sure the grid is selected and then go to Object, Live Paint and Make or you can use the shortcut Alt Control X. And what that does, it allows us to freely paint within each square within our grid. If you deselect the grid, press R on the keyboard for the eyedropper tool and just color pick one of the colors from our color swatches and then press the K key on the keyboard. This allows us then to paint freely within the grid of squares. To begin with, I'm just gonna use one single color. And then what you wanna do is you wanna think about each shape and how this fits into the letters that you wanna create. So the word I'm gonna create is obviously Rich GFX. And I'll start with the letter R. And I'll simply just start drafting out some of the Tetris shapes until I've got a letter R shape that I'm sort of happy with. For parts of the letters that you might not have a specific shape for, we can just fill those in with a slightly more random shape. And what this will do is it will just add a little bit more towards the artwork. So as you can see, I've used two of the L type shapes use one of these shapes, the square and the long shape. And then I've just filled in the rest with just blank dots. And what we'll do is once we've created the whole word, I'll recolor each one of these shapes so you can see which shape is which. Once you've created your first letter and you're happy with it, then it's just a case of creating every other consecutive letter within your word. Once you finish creating your word and you're happy with each individual letter, the next thing we want to do is expand the Live Paint option. So select the grid, go to Object, Live Paint, Expand, and then head straight to the Layers panel, and I'll just drag that out for you. Expand the Live Paint group, select the second group which should contain each letter, drag that to the top of the stack, reselect the main group and then simply hit the delete key and what that'll do is it will just remove the grid leaving the squares which make up each letter. Next we're going to colour in each one of our Tetris shapes so it matches the colour palette that we've chosen. So first select the text and go to object ungroup and then simply start selecting each Tetris shape, press R on the keyboard and then just colour pick whichever colour matches that shape. And we want to do that for each letter until the whole word is completely coloured in.
Once you've coloured in the text, you should be able to easily identify each Tetris shape within each letter. Any shapes which are left over, I've literally just used the yellow colour from the Tetris square. So the next thing we want to do is we want to highlight each letter individually and then go to Object Group and then simply just group all the shapes together. Once all the shapes are grouped together, horizontally and vertically center the text within the artboard and then we can just hide our Tetris shapes. Next we're going to add the isometric Tetris look to the text. So first select the text and just make it a little bit bigger. Then go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. Within the Extrude and Bevel options we want to set the X axis to minus 39 degrees the Y axis to 1 degree and the Z axis to 0 degrees. For the perspective we want to change this to 30 and then we want to decrease the extrude depth to around 35 but feel free to play around with these settings as you see fit. Once our settings are in there press OK and then go to Object Expand Appearance and what that will do is it will just flatten that 3D extrude effect and then we want to ungroup all these different shapes by going to Object Ungroup and then repeating that around two or three times. Now that everything's been ungrouped we can simply go in there and select each individual face of each shape which forms our letter. So our next task is to select the faces of each Tetris shape and group them into one single group. And to do that, we simply zoom into the first letter, select each individual face of that particular Tetris shape, and then go to Object Group. And then we want to repeat this for every single Tetris shape in each letter until everything has been grouped together. Once you've successfully grouped everything together, which I know is a bit of a time consuming process, but the reason we actually select in each one of the faces on each one of the shapes is because when we applied the 3D extrude effect, there's going to be a number of hidden faces behind each shape which we don't need. So it's just about isolating each shape and then removing the hidden shapes behind each letter. So once you've grouped all the faces together, next what you want to do is select each shape on each letter so all the shapes on the letter R and then go to object group and then from within the layers window you should be able to see that group which we just created and if you simply hide that group layer you'll see all the shapes which are left over so if you make a selection around all those shapes and then hit the delete key unhide the letter and that removes all the hidden faces which are sitting behind and then we can do that for each letter. So again, select the shapes, go to object group, find the group within the layers panel, hide the group and then make a selection around everything which is left over and then hit the delete key. Once all the hidden shaped faces have been removed within the layers panel you should be able to clearly identify each one of the letters in its own single group. If you have any layers which are left over then you might just want to look into where those sit within that letter and then look at whether this needs to be removed or added to the group. Next make a selection around everything and then from within the stroke panel add a one point stroke to each one of the shapes and then change the corner to a round join and what this does is it just eliminates any of the strokes from protruding out of the shape and if you wanted to you could increase the stroke weight to two or three depending on how thick you want each square to stand out. Once you've added the stroke zoom into your first letter 
and then we're going to start tweaking some of the colors just to give the lettering a bit more depth and the way we do this is we're going to start adding some gradients to the top portions and side portions of each cube shape so using the direct selection tool which is shortcut a on the keyboard select the first top face and then simply switch the solid fill over to a gradient the angle of the gradient we want to use is minus 90 degrees select the first color node and we want to switch this to its original color and then on the second color node we want to choose the original color but then use a darker shade of it and the way you can do that is if you press the color option and then in the top right hand corner change the color mode to HSB and then just adjust the bottom slider until we get a, a, a slightly darker variant of its original color and we want to do this for each color on each top face on each letter and a quick way to do this is to select the direct selection tool which is sure got on the keyboard select one of the top faces which hasn't changed then go to select same fill and stroke and what that'll do is it should select every top face of that matching color and then we can simply press I on the keyboard and just color pick that first one while everything's still selected go down to the gradient panel and then we just want to change that to minus 90 degrees and then we can just follow those simple steps for every other color in our color palette Once the gradient's been added to each top part of the face, you want to repeat the same process for all the side faces. So again, just selecting the side face, then going to select, same, fill and stroke, and then changing the solid fill to the matching gradient of the top faces. Now all the side faces are complete, what we want to do is select the front face in squares, again using the direct selection tool, and then go to select, same, fill and stroke, and what we want to do is we want to reselect our original color because when we applied the 3D extrude and bevel effect, the default lighting options would have adjusted the color slightly. Once you've selected the original color, we want to go to Object, Path, Offset Path, and we want to offset the path by around minus 5 pixels or maybe minus 3 pixels, and then press OK. And while the offset path version is still selected, remove the solid fill and then change the black stroke to a white stroke. And then if you go to the transparency panel, if you don't see the transparency panel, you can go to window and then transparency or use the shortcut shift control F10. And then we want to change the blend mode to something like overlay or even soft light, depending on how much you want these squares to appear. We can also adjust the opacity of the stroke to something like 50%. Once you're happy, we want to repeat that for every other front face and colour of each one of our letters. Once all the front faces are complete, we're ready to add our background. So using the rectangle tool, just going to create a rectangle which matches the size of our artboard. Horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard and then right click and go to arrange center back. And I'm just going to use a bluey purple color and then I'm just going to lock that into place to stop it from moving. Now the text is pretty much complete. All that's left to do now is perhaps to add a few special effects or a few little elements to bring it to life. And some of the things that which you can do are you can add some neon lines on the floor. You could even add a shadow. And to make the text pop that little bit more, you could increase the stroke around the outside of all of the text. And you could even add some floating tetra shapes which look like they're falling from above. That's it for this one folks, hopefully you've learned something new. If you have, don't forget to leave me a comment down below and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.